Hey everybody, some gadget guy here with a little Windows Phone update. I went ahead and loaded the newest version of the developer preview onto my Lumia Icon. Now I normally do my Windows Phone videos from my 1520, just because it's a bigger screen, it's a little bit easier for me to frame the shot. But I had to roll this back to Windows Phone 8 so that I could get the official version of the Nokia Lumia Cyan update. So this is running the actual commercial release of Windows Phone 8.1. But there's a new developer preview update for Windows Phone 8.1 update one. And that's just been released with a couple new little features we're gonna look at real quick. For those of you who are curious about such things, my 1020 also just got the update. Windows Phone 8.1 preview for developers update. This update can make your phone work even better. We've made some improvements to Windows Phone. Create folders on your start screen to keep apps organized. Select multiple text messages and forward them as one and more. But I also wanted to show the icon booting up as the last two updates, I've noticed that we now have a big bright red splash screen for Verizon Wireless on the icon where we used to just have a Windows Phone logo. And if anyone's buying a new icon, please uh, reach out to me and uh, let me know, did they switch the live tile color over to that big bold red? I think it's kind of a wasted opportunity on Verizon's part not to have <laughs> the Verizon red for the live tiles. And here is our start screen. Now, one thing I wanted to show is just like the Nokia Lumia Cyan update on the 1520, we now have these little arrows, these little indicators telling us when we've got data being transferred onto and off of the device. So even while the icon doesn't have the full Cyan update yet, uh, we do have some of these nice little cosmetic touches up here on our status bar. And so if you're already running Windows Phone 8.1 or the developer preview of 8.1, these changes aren't going to feel profound. But we can definitely check out, we're gonna go, whoops, we're gonna go into messaging. And we're gonna pull up, what do I have as a thread? We're gonna pull up Courtney's text messages here. And so just like in email, now we can do multiple selections of text messages. So when we tap over here on the side, we now get these little check boxes. What's not apparent right away is after you've selected these check boxes, if we go down to create a new message, this is how we now forward text messages. Now, I'm not really entirely sure what someone would use this feature for. Someone drop me a comment down below. Have there been times where you've wanted to copy multiple text messages and then send them to someone else? Or maybe there's a legal reason why you would wanna be able to have this capability. I don't know. I kind of don't want to get involved in anyone's marital disputes. But now if we tap on this little plus icon down here, it pulls all of those messages and now we have one big bulk message from those three selected messages prior. So now I can uh, put in a new phone number or I, or I can pull up a new contact and uh, send all of these messages in bulk to that person. And for people that have been wanting this feature, what I like is that it works very similarly to how we select multiple emails in the email app. But the bigger update is now having proper native support for folders on our home screen. And it works just about how you think creating a folder should work. So I've got, you know, like a mapping tile here, and I've got my music tile, I've got my games tile, and I've got my files tile. And let's say I wanted to take these four tiles and make one big tile, but we're gonna long press on uh, games here. I'm just gonna roll this over here. And now we see this grid pop up, and whenever the grid pops up, it pulls down a new temporary slide here, which shows us what's in that folder. So now I'm gonna tap on maps and I'm gonna move maps over. And then I'm gonna tap on files and I'm gonna move files over. And then, oh, whoops. <laughs> and I let go too quick. I'm gonna move files over, oh, stop moving around. There we go. And then I wanna make this even bigger. So this also responds to the three different sizes of live tiles. So if you want, you can just keep it as a, as a little teeny file and you can just see little, uh, little teeny thumbnails, uh, even smaller than the quarter size, uh, their eighth size now uh, icons there, or we can expand it to be a double wide live tile there. So I kind of like that. I'm gonna go ahead and tap, let that fit back into place. And then what's cool is that these sort of slide around, just to like other live tiles, these sort of slide around with whatever information is coming in from those live tiles. But then let's say I wanna get, and I know like I've, I need to get into my files and uh, I'm gonna tap on this and it slides down at the bottom of your screen here so that you can then tap on any of the individual apps that are in this folder. And I think this is kind of a novel approach to creating a folder. As you see, it sort of dumps everything out of this foldered tile into its own unique little space. And then from here, if we wanna separate apps back out of there, we just long press again, and then we can drag them back onto our, our home screens like that. So now I've got a folder tile here and then I pulled my games back out of it. It's really easy to manipulate and it's, it's really nice if you want to kind of collect, like say you want to collect a bunch of uh, geolocation apps into one folder or you want to collect all of your emails into one folder or maybe you've got a bunch of different music apps. And from a design standpoint, I think it does a wonderful job of fitting in with the rest of the aesthetic 
created by Microsoft for live tiles on your home screen. And one of the other improvements that supposedly dropped with this update is uh, an improved uh, Internet Explorer. I oh, yeah, go to US Mobile Airways there. Uh, an improved Internet Explorer t for handling mobile and WebKit uh, tags. So if we go into settings. Oh, no, I do have the mobile version selected. So let's just see if we go to, say, Gmail as the mobile browser. Let's see if it handles this any better. Oh, a nice little blooming effect in there as we uh, as we get our email. So that that actually does look a little bit prettier. It does seem to scroll a little bit easier. So it, Internet Explorer probably will do a slightly better job of spoofing the iOS or the Android browser for sites that are looking for those uh, those WebKit tags. And this will definitely be a welcome improvement for a lot of these apps and services that we use through our browser. Especially as uh, before this update, I was basically going through the desktop version, just suffering through the desktop version on a lot of these. So hopefully that'll improve maybe uh, how Google Plus works and how a few like Google Voice might work uh, as we don't have any official Google apps for Windows Phone just yet because uh, these companies can't uh, figure out uh, how to work together on providing us consumers with good services. We also have two other small updates. We have uh, better VPN settings. We can come in here and connect to your organization's network or the internet from anywhere over a more secure connection. This is uh, definitely going to be a benefit for businesses, small businesses, large businesses that have to configure their own VPN settings. So that's definitely going to be uh, welcomed by a number of uh, corporate and IT minded folks. Then we also have Apps Corner. And Apps Corner lets you give people access to selected apps on your phone so they get a customized start screen when they use your phone. So we can select uh, different apps that we might wanna put on that home screen. So if we ever need to let someone borrow our phone or let a kid play with our phone, they have a customized experience for what they can interact with. You can also keep some services and some apps private in a way to kinda like, not to guard your information, but to give you a little discretion over who gets access to what services on your phone. So let's see, we can uh, select the seven minute workout, Photoshop, alarms, Amazon, and uh, battery saver. And I'm gonna hit okay. We're gonna leave, oh, we can disable action center from here if we don't want people to be able to pull down. So let's go ahead and hit that. And let's see what's in advanced. Uh, the camera button, search button off. So they can't get into Cortana during Apps Corner. Uh, start button on, back button on, and then modify tiles. Let's turn that off. And so let's come back. Then to exit Apps Corner, press and hold the power button and swipe right. I'm going to hit launch. It's going to take a second. Oh, and there is a, a customized home screen. I can't swipe to the side or I can't pull down. I told it to disable the action center so they can't get into my notifications. Uh, let's see if I go into battery saver, it'll pull up battery saver. And now I can hit back, I can pull up battery saver and hit home. Okay, so all of that works. And then let's see, I wanna get into Cortana, but nope, I told it to disable Cortana so it can't be doing voice searches or anything like that. I did say leave the camera button up so we can take pictures from this interface. And it's a really clean way to sort of uh, do sort of a temporary loan out, you know, like, hey, you need to use my phone for an hour. So here's here's some stuff to play with. Uh, have at it. But now we want to see if I long press this. Oh, swipe right to exit corner apps, and then it's going to take me back to my own home screen. <laughs> okay, so Corner Apps needs a little bit of work because I just went back to my own home screen and it looks like it dumped almost everything I've got into the folders application view. Um, so I'm going to have to go through and clean all that back out. Looks like Apps Corner needs a little bit more work, guys. I'm going to maybe throw this through a reboot so that we can try and play with that. But this has been the developer preview for Windows Phone 8.1 Update 1. Uh, it looks like they need a little bit more polish to go on cleaning up some of their newer features, but I'm stoked to be playing with like the uh, the the app folder 
I don't know if I'll be messing with Apps Corner for a while just because that, that's going to be a pain to replace all of my live tiles. But I'm curious, folks, if you've been running a Windows Phone, if you've been using the developer preview, or have you gotten the official Windows Phone update for uh, 8.1? How have you been liking it? Have you been liking Nokia Cyan? Have you been liking all those additional features? Uh, definitely drop me a comment below because I love knowing what you guys are up to on your <laughs> mobile devices. I'm sorry, I'm still, I'm still flipping out about how they completely messed up my folder there. Uh, as always, folks, thanks so much for watching my videos, sharing my videos, subscribing to my channel, dropping me all those amazing comments down below my videos. I love the conversations we get into. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.